like some nice nuke out from that. But you're not going to be stealing anything with the Rubik that's very nukeage apart from the plasma field. That's the only thing you can take away from the Razor. The Starfall, the Arrow, that'll be nice, but... Normally as a Rubik you won't get yourself in range for that Starfall. Even Marana, she's got a repositioning ability that allows her to use that Starfall exactly where she wants it, like the maximum, maximum spread. So how does Not Today want to finish their lineup here? But I still don't know if this is going to be a call Marana as well. But it's just a support Five hero. Do they get Kareem? Do they take jungle? Remaining. Or do we get a, a ganking support? Control support? And it's a Wind Ranger. And we get ourselves a control and support. Uh, this will be a support Wind Ranger as well. They have actually a quite a good success rate with the, wind ra with the Wind Ranger. But in this game, I'm a little concerned that she's going to be too fragile. The ability just to, to pop the Wind Ranger with Razor and Centaur. All it's going to take is a Hoof Stomp, Double Edge, Plasma Field, and the Wind Ranger is dead. It's the same thing for the Lich. And if you have a 5 second arrow set up on any of these heroes, you're also Ten in a seconds. lot of trouble. And Wind Ranger, Remain. the perfect counter to her is already out. Like, you got Purge Five and seconds. Disruption. Remain. These are the two greatest abilities you could have uh, up against a Wind Ranger. Swift. And the Spectre pick up. Oh, that would be crass. Fogged! Why do you do this, man? Actually, he does this because he feels... That's the primary reason he's doing this right now. He looks at the lineup and goes, okay, the late game, we're in trouble. The Void and the Viper, or at least the, uh, the late mid game. Uh, you're going to have the Void, the Viper, and the Invoker all hit their sweet spots right out in the money. Uh, your SD and Marana, if that combination doesn't work, you're going to need something else to follow up, and that's going to be the Centaur. And then the Centaur, if he doesn't get a Blink Dagger, then you're kind of in more trouble. So you need to have someone that's just capable of out-carrying everybody and causing serious problems for the supports. And that's where Spectre comes in. That haunt on both a Wind Ranger as well as a Lich, they're two very squishy supports. Even when you do get, like, your Ice Armor up and running, your Frost Armor up and running, it's, it's not going to be enough to deter Spectre, because it's only the Illusions. It's the Haunt Illusions which you're attacking. And then if he does Reality in, just beat the living crap out of whoever he finds, because they're probably going to be isolated, and that's when the Desolate really kicks in, too. Really a, a perfect hero. Maybe a little bit more difficult to, to, uh, to not be controlled, but should be able to survive through Chrono, should be able to survive against, like, uh, like, I'm not going to say an Invoker Initiation, but a lot of the control abilities of the Invoker. The Viper is the only person that could just end up kiting the Spectre. So the Viper, that's where Razor has to make sure he... The, the Viper is Razor's job in this game. The Arrows from the SD as well as the Marana, uh, with their combination, they're searching for kills wherever they can find them. That's, that's the goal right now. So, chill time for both the teams as we wait for our... Is it just Fogged? No, nah, Fogged's actually already in there as the SD. Just uh, Korok. We're waiting for us to find one from Navi US to select the hero. And then we get ourselves started. Into game number two. As you can see, now we do actually have our best of three being displayed. And Navi US are up one game. Just need to win one of these games and they'll advance themselves through into that winner's bracket final. I said the grand final, sorry. As we'll be having uh, Sneaky Nick's Assassins already waiting for their opponent there. They had actually hit themselves a pretty rough run so far. If, if this game actually ends up going 2-0, it's the first game of our playoffs that hasn't gone to a full three games. <laughs> and I, I, I would say that's a good thing, but casting until 6am in the morning here in Europe? Nah, it was actually fine. The games were actually quite entertaining. That's why we still actually had a lot of people tuning in to the very end. But it definitely is a, a bit of a hard run for the players. But if you want to check out all the details of the tournament, you can go to d2cl.org. That is the homepage, the English homepage of the tournament. You can also check out our coverage pages over on joinoda.com. We have all the details available for you there. Just click, click the big golden text in the live and upcoming bar and it'll take you there. Or you can use our coverage navigation bar, which will flag the top five coverages at, of late, as well as uh, their recent games. You can also click the show all button, which is at the bottom of that, and it'll take you to wherever you want to go. Uh, you can actually search through all the old coverages and everything else we've got, so... You can actually make use of our database right now. It's very, very helpful. Yeah. 
And we've got more action coming up too. The D2CL, obviously this is our second last game for the US version of it. It's not too long before we actually have our LAN finals as well. That's only three weeks away. Actually, sorry, four weeks away. And uh, D2CL will actually be back on Tuesday night. We'll have three games in total coming away as Alliance will return from, uh, from their trip down to China. Of course, they will be playing with a stand-in, Chessie, having himself some rough back troubles of late. So uh, there will be a stand-in for that one, but we'll have Alliance versus Fnatic, and then Alliance versus VP. And then the final game will be the D2CL US Grand Final. So that'll be happening all three games in a row, starting at 18 CEST on the 7th of October. So that's only two days away, this coming Tuesday. You'll find the action then. While uh, we're doing a lot of other action as well, I don't know if you guys caught the end of the MSI Beat It Land uh, uh, finals for the APAC. So now all uh, teams known for that one had a rather spectacular ending. I know Cap is uh, chopping up the VOD for it right now. But if you haven't seen that, uh, I highly suggest you keep watching social networks. We'll spam it out as soon as it's available. But uh, yeah, that, land, that last final with Jayo uh, playing in that competition ended up with a rather spectacular ending. So... Yeah, definitely should check that one out. And we'll have WePlay starting tomorrow morning. So 12 CEST, we'll have WePlay China uh, starting up. So we've got HET, BT, WG, Tongfu, as well as more action coming up too. And that's all the placement matches coming up from China before the main event will be beginning for WePlay. And most of that will actually happen after ESL1 New York, which uh, will be on a plane four in three days time. So... Should be good times in New York. Hopefully you'll come over and see us. Hopefully also you'll come and see me in, uh, at Bucharest. I'll be covering that one with Bucking Mad live at the event. So good times ahead. Good, good times ahead. So, uh... <laughs> need a pause. Still some issues. Really? Virginia? I'm wondering a personal location. Shout out to my people in the Bronx. Well, you from the east coast or the west coast? I don't know, because I don't know where the Bronx are. Ge like, geography was one of the worst subjects I ever had at school. Like, the worst subject I had at school was geography. I was from Australia. We're in the middle of nowhere. We don't care about the rest of the world. Unless the rest of the world invades us, we just sit there. And Australia gets in trouble overseas, and all of a sudden, it's all over the Australian newspapers, and we, know, but we then know where that country is. Um, and we know it's in the northern hemisphere. <laughs> That's basically it. Some people, yeah, they'll study geography because they want to know the big wide world and then they actually go and see it. Most other Australians just hide their own little worlds in Australia. It's, it is a nice little remote location. Big location. Largest island of the world. Even though I've been told I'm wrong on that. It's, it, uh, Australia is meant to be a continent. I'm like, why? Island, damn it. It is an island. We're away from the rest of the world. We like it that way. Actually, I hate it that way. That's the reason why I'm here in Berlin. <laughs> it's too removed. Flying from one side of the world to the other from Australia. I do not recommend it. I really, really do not recommend it. My first trip I had from Australia going to uh, Sweden. I went there for DreamHack. Like, these days I just get... I, I can even take a ferry and I'll get there in like six to seven hours. I take a plane, I'm there in like two hours. But actually it wasn't even two hours. I think it was only like just over one hour. But when I, uh, when I first came over to Europe, his story time with Toby while we wait, by the way. First time I came to Europe, I ended up uh, traveling and I had to go from the Brisbane airport to Sydney. Then I flew from Sydney to Beijing. Uh, in Beijing, I had myself a 10 hour stopover. And then I flew from Beijing to the Orlando airport and then I had to catch a train for uh, what was three, four hours to actually get myself to, uh, to Jean, Jean Poning. I can never say that name correctly either. Uh, Jung, Jung Shipping, Jung Shipping. I think that's as close as I'll ever get if I actually think about it, it's Jung Shipping. Uh, yeah, and I ended up taking a train that far. It, it's in total, it was, I think it was 44 hours or 38 hours. I can't actually remember now because it was, this was like five years ago. Yeah. A long time ago, but it was a hell of a trip. I remember at the end of it, the only thing I wanted to do was just like put me in a hotel room, shower me, clean me, get all sticky after traveling in airplanes. That's not the nice feeling. You get all this like breath on you, and uh, 
and sitting in the Chinese international airport for, for 10 hours having a weird Swedish lady trying to talk to you the entire time and just like don't understand a thing you're saying your accent's too strong and then she says the same thing to me I'm like then why do we keep talking? I don't know ah oh, but luckily I can stop on that story and we'll go into a game so Navi US we're kicking in Korok will be taking up the center going towards the bottom lane snaking actually heading north I don't think this was really meant to uh, just be those kind of lanes because uh, Korok is going to come up. So it's a five bear movement to try and uh, plant down some wards up on the top lane. They could technically try and run an aggro try line with sneaking up here because you'd be running a fa uh, Unless you know, because you're, you're running Viper as a safe lane. It's been played by Iowa, so they know it's going to be a safe lane hero. Uh, Mr. Kobe, the Wind Ranger, uh, supporting him up, smash towards the middle lane, and that leaves a Faces Void off lane with a Lich also babysitting him. But the reason why they can run the aggro try line is because NOT is trying to get greedy by running uh, dual lanes. So they move up a very, very long ways. A lot of pings coming up there from the Spectre. Flagging the fact the Viper is up on the top lane, so they just leave the Centaur behind. He has an Observer Ward on Korok at the moment. But where are they going to plant this? They're actually all coming down to look for the 30 second room. And Ragnarok. Okay, so he just puts down his Observer Ward, so they can watch the top room at least. And yeah, they're actually going to try and run an aggro tri lane here. So Fogged and Ragnarok, the killing potential. They're gonna need to get an early kill out here, or else this Viper and Wind Ranger are gonna zone out the Spectre. Then she'll never get any kind of farm. But this does similarly guarantee that Korok will be capable of getting himself his Blink Dagger. Like, he's still the going up against the begins. Lich as well as a Faceless Void, but it could be a lot worse. It's a regeneration rune, so both these heroes don't want it. The prize is mine. And then Observer Ward from, N from NOT. This was meant to be for the uh, initiation from the Shadow Demon and uh, Emirana. And now they won't have that at all. They get a Bounty Rune into the Marana. Now, there is an Observer Ward down for the Dire side, but it's actually in a really bad position for him. Because all it sees is basically what's coming up the river and what's around this area. So I'll spot them if they try and use this little zone to initiate up. But if they don't, then it's just an easy move around. And right now, Mystico and Iowa, they are yeah, they're really uncertain about this. They don't know where they're coming from. Now they're actually going to scout out the fact that uh, Fogged and Ragnarok are up here. But this is this is the last sneak and he gets some space on this top lane. So Korok, he goes uh, one on two. But how many tangos? He's got Stout Shield as well as a set of tangos. So he's perfectly alright in this lane. And Excalibur's gonna zone out the Invoker a little bit. Last time we saw Excalibur go this Razor mid, he actually didn't level up Plasma Field until level five. Uh, he ended up going a, 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 a one, two build. And then he went the two points of him Plasma Field because he held onto the points for a while. And then uh, he actually ended up leveling up uh, Static Link more than anything else. But he wanted to also have a high level up in an unstable current. So he had the movement speed as well as the ability to steal. Korok, trouble. Hulf Stomp, just trying to keep Mihawk away from him. He's got no time lock, so it's just basic damage. The Sun Strike's gonna connect, and they got him. The Frost Blast is coming up cooldown. They get first blood on Korok. And Smash able to help out. That was only a level one Sun Strike, but it was still enough damage to get the kill. And you'll see who just gets what, the gold. And actually, all goes away of Lich, because obviously the, uh, the Sunstrike didn't get the last hit in. But that still gives an assist over to Smash. He's sitting over at level... Ah, uh, it's just level 3 pop. And SD can't really find the opening they're searching for on this top lane. Snaking is, however, still getting some really good farm as an off laner. While Korok may have died, and she's only got 2-0 on this lane too, that's not helpful. Got Shadow Demon making his way down. Grabs himself a bounty rune, so level 2, Disruption and Catcher. And Smash, again he does this. It's early Alacrity and early Media. It's really good when you got rotating supports. In this game though, they have no rotating support, so it's purely for Alacrity. The bonus damage is at 20. But it's helping him with last hits. Excalibur can't really do much about it. He steals out the damage, but he can't steal more than 20 points of damage. Not before the, uh, well, Invoker just walks himself back. Not unless he's going to pick up boots anytime soon, but Excalibur went for the bottle to start with. Well, the boots shouldn't be far off for both these heroes. It's just the couriers are a little bit busy right now, or at least the Radiant one is. Korok, battling up against even Liches coming behind him. That's the Illusion Rune of Masoku. And Korok, you're too low, man. Sunstrike. It's still only level 1, but Korok is not a healthy chappy. Now, they might find some level of opening here. Mystico, backing himself up. In fact, even Wind runs himself away. 
Here, a spectral dagger fly as well, but it's the bottom lane which I'm more interested in. Korok really stuck into the tree line. He's pinging out the fact he's, he's trying to actually cut through the tree line, realizing the zone strike is going to cause him some problems. So just jukes it around the tree line. Actually, jukes out Mihawk again. And Mihawk stuck down here. He'll take damage from the tower on the way out, unless he backtracks it, which he doesn't on either of the hits. Nice little movement coming out from Korok to move back up again. So to go in just the, uh, oh, I move back into the trees oh default way. Because with the Dire Creek Wave going down, he, Mihawk lost all the vision outside next to the tower. How's Korok doing? Time lock again. All but Venom as well. Gonna make life even more difficult for the Centaur. He's running out of consumables soon. And he's not getting to his Tranquil Boots at the rate he would really prefer it. But there's no extra movement speed, so they need to try and find something else. Where the arrows are flying into Smash. Courier didn't get sniped off by Ragnarok either. It's a haste through trying to find that opening. Now Korok, Orb Stomp, supports coming in from the Shadow Demon. They'll actually end up tanking up the Sunstrike together. The double edge means the face of Void will get the kill, but... Now Shadow Demon also cracks almost level 4 from watching that face of Void die. Pretty sure that's where Centaur wants to be. He's four and a half levels over on that Centaur. There's still a second death right now for Korok. But the Spectre sitting at 21 for 6. Up against the Viper who's 13-2. And the Wind Rangers had very little influence here too. As Ragnarok again goes on a search for these supports. I'd say they've been nerfed up, but it's two and a half levels to both of them. Just, sorry, take it back because obviously the SD got a lot of experience in the bottom lane. And now he's actually in trouble. Disruption's already gone on Masoku. Korok trying to get closer to him. Masoku, the poison, it connects. I think that may even be enough damage on the last tick. Nah, actually, no, it's not. It was only the catch that was left on him. It was that tick damage, which Thank didn't bring you. him down. <laughs> so, Fogged and Korok trying to find that disruption into Hoofstop combo. Obviously, the double edge ends up just being... Well, it's the death of Korok, because the burst damage of Masoku is too scary for him. It's a level 3 Frost Blast. They need to have the arrow in combination, but while this Observer was down for 30 more seconds, Ragnarok can't surprise anybody with the arrows. He thinks he is, but... He's perfectly visible to NOT. I think Masoku's coming down here so he can Frost Blast him, but... Ragnarok's already backed up, snaking. Trying to get into the Fog of War. Throws out a Spectral Dagger so he can just jump himself over the tree line, but... The prize is mine. He's going to salve up too. Early phase, which means the snaking is just walking around with extra damage for the moment, but his survivability is quite low. Shackle, latch is perfect. But not enough damage the to bring him down. Sun strike, looking for the hit. Snaking as she waits it out. And then daggers up again. This time he's gonna slow up the Viper. They got support coming in at Excalibur. They want this kill on the Viper and they're gonna get it. No he was more. isolated so far because uh, Mystico, he dragged the creep wave down. And he was so far away from his teammate, meaning the Desolate can actually work. Radiant now Void jumping in on the top. Attack. Fogged. He's still got disruption. Throws out the catch with the creep wave there. It's not going to help him off. Spectre Horn trying to come in and help him out. And they're actually going to find Masoku. Reality does come in. The defensive disruption saving the life of Korok for a moment. And the Spectre now picks up. Did actually get the last hit in the kill on the top lane. Ended up actually getting split between with the creep wave, but... This time around, Sneaking does get the kill. Perfect. And they come in towards the mid lane. Looks like an arrow connected there from Smash. Excalibur with the plasma field. It's a lot of early damage. He'll go in this, but Excalibur can steal, steal this. A leap into the tree line from Ragnarok. Somehow I should manage to find that small little path that was there. The Frost Blast is still affecting me from Masoku. Puts down the Observe Ward. If Fog needs to, he can defensive disruption here. They don't have mana for an arrow, so there's not much point to it. Apart from just harassing out the Lich. And giving space to his teammate. We get sneaking now back to the bottom lane. Farming up everything he's got. Gonna pump this Spectre up to getting that urn. So it can just be the basic drums as well as urn with face boots. Spectral dagger now into Mihawk, the catcher. He's isolated, throws the chrono, sneaking. He's just on the edge of this one with a sun strike, as well as the control. And he's actually shackled to the tree line, even though he wasn't caught in the chrono. And Fog didn't even have enough, have enough damage to save him anyway. Uh, Mystico. Oh, yo, yo! What are you doing? Even with Windrun, this isn't a great idea. Stampede's gonna work. He's trying to juke it out in the tree line. The arrows, where is it coming in? More poison stacks, and Mystico's dead here. Ragnarok's there to help out. A spectable respawn back toward the living. Uh, looks like there's actually a little bit of a chase coming out from Excalibur too. 
pushing that Invoker back again. It's the highest. Well, he's got 41 CS up against a 17 12. Uh, Excalibur has firmly won this middle lane. Radiant even get some space for Ragnarok to have his level 5. So, po 2 point Starfall. I think he actually wants to leap to Starfall to arrow this one. If he's got the mana for it, ah, uh, the arrow is off target. <laughs> he didn't actually have the mana for the Starfall as well, so the arrow had to connect there. But this Lich is walking around with it's only basic boots, but the 365 versus 350 movement speed. 365 is more than enough to dodge an arrow. Especially when it's such an obvious thing coming. Mihawk, no Chrono. They just Frost Blast and try and push Snaking straight back out of the lane again. Not successful at doing so because the Mirana's already moved itself back. And with the Observer Ward on the other side of the tree line, they know Snaking has no support here. So even though he might be moving like he does, they know he doesn't. It's Korok now finding his own farm up on top. Getting a lot closer to having his uh, Tranquil Boots. There's some easy regeneration. But just needed some space for it. Viper, she managed to catch up a long way too, up to 45 in the CS now. Starts working on that mech, but we're still 9 minutes in without having that early mech, which you really wanted to have by running a safe lane, mech, uh, a safe lane Viper. So the timing's just a little bit behind here for NOT. <laughs> Mihawk, Chrono, it's going to go sneaking. Lich Holt is actually even going to be committed to killing this off. Let, let off Frost Blast as well as that Chain Frost. Korok hiding in the tree line, Mystico. Well, he almost got the whole stuff on him. Instead, he'll actually look over towards Iowa. The Shack won't be able to latch here. Fogged. The center all he's going just so they can run up to him. Double edge. He's holding onto it. Now he throws it. Fogged. Viper Strike. He'll have to actually disrupt himself to save himself. But then the power shot from Mystico perfectly on target. And Korok won't be able to reach him in time. That Viper able to kite out these melee heroes. The Spectre Horn's going to come. Reality in. He has the dagger. Throws the dagger. Actually, high. didn't target it towards the hero. And because of that, now Viper doesn't take the damage from that. That's 150 damage. He threw it onto the ground instead. Middle lane, they go into smash. Looks like an arrow is able to connect. The Sun Strike's going to do some nice damage to Ragnarok as he pushes him back here. Excalibur needs one more hit to smash or a plasma field, but he won't get that hit. Lich does come in, try and slow down Excalibur. Even gives a lacrity over to Lich so he can try and physical DPS him down if he does get the hit. Disruption. Catcher with poison. Uh, the catcher again latches attack. over on a creep and fogs in a lot of trouble. He keeps the poison coming, so the Viper will die here. And with an urn charge, that's death to Mystico. The tick out from this one. And he knows it too. He turns and that gives a double kill to Snaking. 1k gold now over on him. Another death to the Viper, two for two. He's really coming with a lot of sacrifices. Overall, the advantage is still heavily coming the way of the Spectre, and that's what Navi US want. Well, the combo is still great for, for NOT. It's momentum on the back of a Spectre. It's the primary thing. You obviously want to have yourself a Blink Dagger, but right now it's just Centaur as a Stampede when, when it's needed. To allow for dice behind towers or potential escapes. That's all he is really there for. He's not the initiator. Even the SD Disruption is not allowing them to like, get the initiation off because there's too much control. Too much movement speed control. And when they do Radiant's come in close and they run together as a pair, that's when you get the Radiant's ability just to get those shackle shots off. Fortified. And two heroes locked together for a time. But you lose all your control. <laughs> Korok is really not sure about this bottom lane. And rightly so. Chain Frost coming off cooldown in 10 seconds time. The Chrono is already up and available, so they won't have a crack at this. But this Dire Observer Ward... I think they got a glimpse of Ragnarok. And they're going to loop themselves around the back of him. Attack. They could just leap over once they see him. And he does walk up. He's in range. So is Fogged. The ping actually came out saying we need to catch out Fogged more than anybody else. A leap away. Ragnarok will see him. Mihawk. He's got three heroes. They're two grouped. They're two grouped. The Chrono. Defensive disruption. Wastes his time. He's still waiting for Fogged. The Lich Holly's now going to go. But the only pick off an SD for that Lich Holly, Ragnarok. Don't make a bounce to you. And now Spectre. Going to reality in. Looking for a target. The Shackle. Latched over on Korok. But he gave him the Stampede already. The leap away to save the dagger. Keeping him slowed. And the mech will arrive from Viper. So NOT. Green. A lot of heroes down this bottom lane. Smash. The only one not there. And the Shackle. Latches. Sunstrike. Ragnarok's a bit of target at the moment. But they wouldn't get, weren't going to hold him there in time. Korok going to TP out. The Sun Strike is enough damage. They'll get the kill while Excalibur is going to try and force out the top tier 1 tower. The risk qualification for the moment. 
But NOT have no desire to come back and defend this. There's no fortification for Navi US for their T1 tower in the bottom lane. So it ends up just being a 1 1 trade off. Unless they feel they can TP in, but with no Chrono Radiant going up against the resets of Excalibur, yeah, it's just a trade off. Razor takes one, Viper takes the other. Denied! At 10 6 on the board. The advantage pushing in the way of NOT. And now snaking. They're gonna try to crack in this disruption. Poison, the catch has to go a little bit higher up, but will connect over on Smash. And the arrow perfectly targeted. Ragnarok will connect. Masoku did arrive with the Frost Blast, but having no Denied. Chain Frost, there's not any more intimidation coming their way. And that's a big hero to get. A lot of experience being gained by all of them. And the extra cash in for the SD. You bring down that mid solo who's sitting at level 9 and a half. It's actually not the highest level on the, on the map. That belongs to the Spectre as well as the Razor. This Galvin is having all the final water from the top. He's almost got his BKB completed. Arms for the dead. Korok. Viper wants to go again. With Viper Strike, he can slow him down, but there's still Stampede available. And now Mihawk. He's got Chrono. Ragnarok just leaves him to the tree lines. And Mihawk, well, he'll just follow him up. Doesn't want to expend the Chrono. And Ragnarok will go down with, without it anyway. The Shackles out the last. Let's see the vision. The Sunstrike was off target. And there's no way Korok could help him out, even if he did throw out that ultimate of his. Even some one attack from that poison. Is up at level 4, so the move slot 40%. Oscalba's trying to finish up these damn towers so he can get that BKB up and running. He still have all those slows coming out from NOT, but you won't have to worry about the shackles or the deafening blasts and cold snaps. Not straight away, at least. The smash. <laughs> I'm watching this out. Uh, the bonus damage now up to 60 because of his exalt, exalt levels. I was actually able to buff up the Viper rather strong with just this. This alacrity build of his. Initially, I thought it was just because he wanted the meteorite with the with the extra tick damage, but it's actually quite amazing how successful alacrity is at giving you just that little bit of extra oomph behind your invoker in the early stages. Nice thing to have up against a high damage yielding uh, razor. A smoke gank coming up from Ragnarok is fogged. Looking towards the top, the Spectre Horn's off cooldown, so as always, these guys should be hunting for kills. Every single time they have a, they have a chance. So they see Mihawk up here. They might have to do a bit of a blind arrow, but then again, they don't really want to do that either. Disruption, it's going to be on Mihawk. The arrow's coming in with the creep wave. Oh, Fox! He pulled it up! That could have actually been disastrous for them, because the Kree Wave was coming in at the right time, but Fogged, either through unintentional brilliance, he dragged the creep wave up then, allowing the arrow to have a clean line to fly in because the Mirana was but the line was just surrendered for the timing of that of that creep wave. But they bring down the faceless void. He never got the chrono off. Some good quick kills. Excalibur, I don't know if he really had to come up for that. And he was the one to take the last hit. And that should actually give him most of the money for the BKB required. Just a couple hundred away from it. Now Sneaking comes into defend the mid lane. He's on his way to that Radiance too, sitting at a thousand gold away from having the relic. The alacrity over on just this uh, invoker illusion. Are they finding more? I think they think. Uh, do they know Mystico's on the side here? Korok's waiting for a Gosh, run in. He's gonna come over attack. towards the tree line, but Mystico. Now nah, the Observer Ward's watching him. That's where the pings are coming out. It's NOT knowing where Korok's moving and where he's waiting. So they start pushing in towards that tier 1 tower. No more supports on the way. Korok's still without a blink dagger, so he can't really do much here without the rest of his team. That means everyone has a TP in. Right now, Raze doesn't have such a thing. And Viper slows down Korok. The Stampede will be used to get away. At the same time, the arrow coming in from behind is trying to make them look behind themselves to worry about Radiance who's coming in from the dire side jungle. Looks like Mihawk might actually find himself a solo kill here. He can Chrono, the leap away. Now Moonlight Shadow, the Chrono Quartz will reveal the Invis Target of Fox. He'll just do a disruption. Ragnarok. Nah, he's locked in here. Where is he? They're into Moonlight Shadow. He doesn't have leap. He needs to juke it out while the Moonlight Shadow is still going. Same for Fogged. He's using the tree, but then again, the Observer Ward's on the other side. He'll save the life for the Mirana, but he shall lose his own. A purge won't work, even with the shackle. Holds him in position. Radiant's top tower is under attack. But it's still uh, the SD going down. The uh... fortified. Okay, whoops. That wasn't intentional. 
They fortified us up the top tower. Maybe actually no, that team one tower went down before. Yeah, but might, might be destroyed now. There's still the, the glimpse you get when the tower's actually dying. Korok, he really wants this last hit. He needs the injection of money. Smash will arrive. You see where they scale but the tower's within deny range. They have to commit. Masoku down to half life. The face of is still not here yet, and he has no chrono. But he used it up on the top lane for the kill on the well the attempted kill over on the Marana. And the follow-up kill into the SD. Are they actually gonna let this go? It looks like they are. They get back to farming up inside the jungle. And the mid tier one tower will be denied by NOT. Yes. So overall advantage, not much really between these two teams. NOT do have the slight advantage. These lineups, I kind of feel like NOT are falling behind here. They haven't had as much of an impact as they needed to early on. 8 12 is not the score line I was searching for from this team. Especially when the Spectre's only two of those deaths. As the Relic will arrive. And once this Reigns is up, the Lich is basically dead. This guy's got Tranquil Boots, Dust, and a Stick. Come on. That's not enough to win. Right, Masoku as well as Viper. What are they up to? I'm gonna smoke up together. Look for a new target. Fog's the closest one for them. The Observer Ward though? Oh, if he's just an inch forward. If he was up here, he would have broken their smoke. And they come in for Roshan. I have to be quick about it, but with the Alacrity. Is she buffing up Smash for now? Is she dishing out a huge amount of damage? But Focus Fire and Necro units. Does she have enough? Fogged? Okay, the poison scattered them out. It's, th this is over. Oh, five second arrows. Excalibur turns on the ulti and then the plasma feel is the perfect thing for a choke point like Roshan. The star fall damage. Masoku, he'll take a fall. And Snaking, able to mop up the pieces. This should give me his radiance as well. This is a disaster for them. Miyok, no mana for Chrono. He's short even with the stick charge. He left himself in, but there was no follow up. And now they've actually done the hard work. They're going to lose Roshan. Even with Wind Ranger alive, they can ping out all they want to. But there is no way that she can stop this. Power shutting down to some extra chip damage, but there's no extra way in. The arrow will fly up, but Roshan now belongs to the Spectre, who has a full radiance. In fact, that's what's coming on the Kuri. Yes, it is. That is the most disastrous fight the Navi US, uh, I mean, the NOT could have taken. The golden experience just skyrocketed in favor of Navi US. And that may have actually been the, the game winning fight right there. One Shadow Poison scout from Fogged. He was able to help get that kill over on the face of Void in the top lane. He wastes the chrono before. With the initiation on the Mirana. It's just been one of those games where Fogged's been in the right positions at the right time. And NOT. They need to gain some level of momentum back again. But how do you do this? They just tried to. They they smoked and went to Roshan. By killing off the big man, they would have got a lot more. But you go for Roshan up against something like a Spectre, that in itself is already ballsy, because he could like, you only need a, a split second to realize they're in at Roshan, pop the horn, and you get the vision straight away. So right now, NOT. Even then, like what are they supposed to do? The raid's got a BKB. He's now 1,500 gold away from having his, his Aghanim Scepter, so that's going to be even more damage output during the team fights. The Spectre has 400 gold, earned phase boots, and now a Vit Booster too, so going to build into... Could we just see a casual Vit Booster? Uh, more than likely, considering he's buying this, it's going to be the heart. He's looking for late game. And you're still not getting anything extra over on these supports. Lich at least does have a Staff of Wizardry, so he's got more than what he had before. I'm assuming that had to be on the Courier, because he didn't have the cash for that before. Mihawk will be going into his Maelstrom, but... Okay, yeah, she has it too. The Courier's bringing out the entire thing. He has a Mithril Hammer on himself. And a second Staff of Wizardry. This one's still gonna belong to Iwo. He's another 300 gold away from his Aghanim Scepter, but I don't know if that's really gonna help him. Because with the, with the speed of these fights, with the Blink Dagger now also over on the Centaur... Oh, that Observable, well, they can see him. If they can get this initiation, Stampede so they can get themselves in range. The double edge with the catcher. And Scalba's Plasma Field, they get an easy pick off over on that Invoker. And Korok reveals the fact that he has that. And this is, this is, this is so danger time for, for the, uh, for the poor Peruvian. Sneaking. He will go down here in the middle lane, but Snake is the immortal. The arrow's trying to give him extra space. They burn the Aegis. 
but you just use your Chrono in order to do such a thing. And they both just TP out straight away. But with Chrono down, like, sure, you lost your Aegis the Immortal on the Spectre, but I don't think that's really much of a concern for him. Because Spectre will keep farming up with the Radiance Burn, triggering the Horn during the team fight is the primary thing. Windrage might have considered farming up his bottom lane, but they won't have it. And because of the way the Spectre works, they can have four heroes here in Navi US, forcing up the middle lane into the tier 2 tower, while Spectre free farms the bottom lane and will haunt in at the right time. And she'll always be in the right position because she'll be on every single position that NOT is in. Cancels all forms of blink daggers, even though they don't have them now. Blink, Korok, there's your haunt. They got the hoof stomp into the wind range, and the arrow's gonna connect as well, getting the kill while Masoku. That's who's sneaking more reality into. The burnout from the Radiance. How is Fogged? He's disrupting up. Mihawk, they use the invis from the Moonlight Shadow to buy some level of protection, but Iwo? Well, he's also coming up trying to battle up with his Necro units. His Galvas are still a little bit of the damage. And they are kind of choked in the tree line here. Mihawk, leap in one second, but that Deathslate attack with the poison damage. He'll actually tick out in the way back out in the face of Void. The Dire Creep Wave's also getting mopped up by this uh, Sun Strike sneaking. <laughs> he's just far enough away. TP's the Forest Spits right behind him. The Smash didn't react in time. Which means now Navi US do get themselves away. The bottom Creep Wave was uh, basically taken out by the Radiance Burn. I, I don't know what he's actually referring to. Considering, I don't know if he just didn't see it, think he was visible, or if it's something with the urns, because I remember our uh, Fog was uh, complaining about that the other night. Now, there was something really weird with, with the urn charges where they shouldn't be cancelling blink daggers or something like that. It was, yeah. I'll, I'll inquire with Fog shortly after the game. All right, so back into the lanes now. Trapira is arriving here with Excalibur, Ragnarok, as well as Korok. And there's a bit of a movement coming out from NOT with just Mihawk as well as Masoku. They're searching for a kill, which the Sunstrike will help them get. And so they're really wanting at the moment. While Smash, he's got his level 3 Necro units, which are nice. This is his only major item he's got. Yeah, Lycrony really just pushes his damage up through the roof. But he's missing out on so much more with he now a full Yule Scepter over on the Shadow Demon. There's double controls, in fact, triple controls coming up from this ST. They want to keep this secret for the moment. The Dire Observe will, will scatter everything out, however. Allies, disappear. Uh, they're going to Moonlight Shadow and move up. But it's at the wrong time. They've already, ba they've already bailed out. There's an Invis rune as well for Korok to take. Either that or Excalibur. Hey, he'll bottle it up. His Agony Intercept is also flying up. And they're not going to find anyone. They do actually manage to get themselves completely past. All the Dire Observe wards, apart from now this one, which is watching Excalibur. And I'll see Fogged also moving in here. So definitely blows the secret that was uh, this movement of, of ganking from, from Na'Vi NA. But they also know too with an Aghanim Scepter, they're pretty well set for the next fight. Arms for the dead. It's a level 3 ultimate, 26 minutes in with the Ag's upgrade. Oh, hello Chrono. Snaking, Sunstrike, that should be enough damage. The faces boy gets the kill. He's stuck here for the moment, however. Shackles will be able to save him. The poison, scouts him out. Hoof stomp, double edge, no backtrack. Poison coming rather close to Mystico, even the arrows were flying in them. So I expect it for the Void, but that's worth it for the Void. At this point, any kind of pick off on the Spectre is worth it. He spent all his money, but this is not. Oh, there goes your Lich. And they're gonna get more. The Viper, defensive disruption. Korok just runs himself away. There's a good shackle over on Fog, but remember, he's got Yule separate. If he goes up in the air, not in time. But Excalibur turns the ulti on. And he'll come in after the Viper. Starts the Sadicling, stealing all the damage. Smash, he can't really help him, even with the Deafening Blast. Excalibur stole 112 points of damage and get a 4 for 2 trade off. And the Invoker has to retreat back to his tier 2 tower. They put so much commitment to try and kill off one Shadow Demon. Because that's what that really was. Technically it was a, it was a 4 for 1. A 4 for 2 trade. Smash. Spectre Haunt. They got him isolated. The Necro units are down, but they know where he's moving because of the Static Link. Which means you can just keep the Radiance Burn going on him, sneaking. Maybe they'll worry about the extra support that's coming over, but there's still two heroes dead. The Static Link has been the perfect indicator for where he was. 
Well, that interaction works some way I'm not aware of, but... Either way... The uh, Invoker will be able to escape himself out, and the Horn's gonna go down for now. Seiki did actually just get the casual VIP boost to board a Yasha instead. So going in for that Manda style. Oh, Mystico is still trying to afford up his four stuff. He's actually got... Okay, so he's the recipe away from it. And now we've got Viper trying to build into a BKB. For now, it's just damage output with a Mithril Hammer. His survivability is already pretty damn good with the Aghanims and Treads. Avoid Leap, it is. Dumping himself away from, uh, from the Shadow Demon. Looks like he ended up disrupting him. But he looks at Mihawk in the bottom lane. They could go for another disruption to catch her. The arrow combination's there, waiting. We will have to get in close. The arrow comes in, tanked up by a creep wave. More, a lot more supports on the way in here. The poison, try and scout him out. The power shot down through the tree line. I think he was trying to cut a path for Mihawk to get out of here. The poison, getting closer and closer by Fog. Mihawk leap in four seconds time. He's got Chrono available, they can see him in the trees. Another poison and disruption catcher. In comes the arrow, but it's gonna be Mystico! He gets hit by that, they'll actually catch up both of them, so Mystico's stuck here. The Chrono will be triggered, but the Static Link's already going to work on the face of Void. So his damage output is enough, the Shack will buy a little bit of time, and they actually both get out! So no damage, it's a straight TP. The Shackle. They didn't really save the life because the Corona was, uh, was stopping the damage Alpha from coming his way, but Ragnarok, and he already threw the arrow too, so there was no extra stun from that. The Scalibur's still got this eye of the storm. They'll want to take the tier 1 and tier 2. Just the tier 1 tower's not going to be enough. In fact, they might, have, might fall back before the tier 2. Ragnarok will have to come to defend this. And they'll fortify because they know they're going to get the fortification back up again anyway when this tier 1 tower drops. So it would stall that early push power anyway. Uh, snipe for Korok. Sees the Korok. Four staff. Needs to attack once and then blink. Couldn't do it though. I dragged the creep wave over with him. While up on the top lane, looks like Spectre. She's coming down to the. Oh, there's double TPs coming in. Fog deals. He's got defensive disruption instead. Those illusions help to bring down these these uh, necro units. I won't survive long enough for it though. What the hell are these creeps doing? These are the ones that follow that follow Korok to start with. And they're gonna bump into Fog. It's just like, wait, what what why? Why why are they here? Reveals their rotation. And OT's gonna go in for Roshan now. This time they'll be successful. Because there's really no one from Navi US in position. The Spectre's on the sideline. They're taking a long time to bring him down. Because they've got no medallion of courage. Smash is gonna finally come in. He can invoke up Alacrity if he wants to. He does the four spirits for now. They're gonna Moonlight Shadow. The sentry wards are down, so they're quite visible here. The like Excalibur just walks in, turns on the Eye of the Storm, starts Static Link on Smash, he four stars away, and now Void. He leaves him, but he's caught on the hill! It's not where he wants to be! The arrows are coming in too! So the Chrono is blown! The Spectre Horn's going, who's he gonna find? Who's he reality to? Oh, that's cold. Now he found the Lich in the tree, li in the tree line trying to TP out in the bottom on the bottom lane. They do still pick up that Aegis of the Immortal. The BKB now into that Viper. And the Aegis Immortal is with him too. I'll leap him. There's no Chrono. Defensive disruption. Yule stepped her up. Trying to break free, or at least the timing of this poison. While Escalibur's still immortal. The damage hooks on from Korok. Able to catch up the Viper in the tree line. Escalibur. This guy's very, very tanky. Lines up for the fine thing time. Korok's coming over. He's stepping to double edge, but that's why Viper has to use that BKB. Soaks up the arrow as well from Ragnarok. One plants on field. The physical DPS to maybe go into the Viper. A four stuff up by Korok. Buys him some space and now sneaking. The Radiant Spurn going into Masoku. He turns around for a quick shackle. Ragnarok leaps though. Not extra movement speed for snaking, but he doesn't care. The urn charge will tick it out. Gets an extra two of himself. Ragnarok will TP out, sneaking up on top of the high ground. The Radiant Spurn is still there, they'll trigger the dust, he's not invis. He just want to get himself down the hill and TP out, and Smash can't find him. They throw a sentry wood up on top of the cliff to see if they can see him. But because he went down the hill, they did not get the vision, and which means Smash does not get the call snap to interrupt the TP out. So 24 to 19 overall. The event is still coming up for Navi US. Or at least they're holding their advantage. You don't have to use any buybacks during that last fight either. That mean mana style? It does. The sneaking, not dying. 
He's getting assists every single fight now, obviously because of one Radiance, two Haunt. Or oh, both together. It's coming down. Uh, it's just TP scrolls from the side. NOT. We have initiating abilities just yet. We've still only got shackles. Like two four staffs and the void chrono. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's shackle and it's shackle and chrono. That puts a lot of pressure on the Mihawk to make sure he hits this chrono correctly every single time. And the fog doesn't screw with him. Because this this void does not have BKB. So we can get Yule set it up. You can defensively disrupt any target that's hit by the Viper Ultimate. Of late it's just been uh it's been the SD anyway. And he buys himself some time by, by defensively, defensively disrupting, as well as your scepter. So a lot of that tick time that you get from the Viper Ultimate, like it's 5.1 second duration, then you take into account the uh, SD. Uh, the Banish duration is 2.5, and then you got the Yule scepter up into the air for another 2.5. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's almost the full duration, short by 0.1 of a second, which would be the, channel, the casting time. So you get 0.1 of a second damage time into the hero. Spectre Haunt, they catch him out. They found the Wind Ranger. The Necronius might have been triggered, but they're not going to do much. The Lich Ulti, the leap away, they got split. Lich Ulti will have no effect. They'll trigger off the, uh, also the Moonline Shadow. Iwo getting slowed down by that Viper Ulti. Escalibur, the Chrono connects. But Escalibur's ulti's already doing a lot of damage to Mihawk. He's dying too quickly. The Eye of the Storm, statically into the Viper. He already took a large portion of damage, 168 points of a sneaking will TP out to make sure he lives through this. Well, they just come in, they'll physically beat down the Viper, but not fast enough. There's a BKB charge going again. And a horrendous team fight for NOT. Four heroes lost in total. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ah, oh, and the tier two tower is going to follow directly after. That's almost the same level as what happened around Roshan. Dyer's and a Vanguard pick up by Sentom, so we're going to be seeing our, uh, our new item, the Crimson. Bit of a slow being applied to Excalibur, especially with the Cold Snap, but a Yule Scepter. Sending the Viper in towards the air before he can get the Viper Strike off. The BKB protection, Shackle won't latch on Fogged. He's still got a defensive destruction available. And also going to walk into a regeneration rune. Almost walked into the Sunstrike. Full Sheba's got as well, 35 minutes in. Now I can put it for the Razor. Now 28 points of armor on him. And you can see how much damage it Faces Void thought it was a great idea triggering the Mask of Madness, looking for the extra damage during the Chrono. But it just made Razor so much more effective. And while he did hit the Chrono, there was then just no follow-up damage coming out. Because the Lich Ulti was, was aside. With no Lich Ulti bouncing around inside the Chrono, there was no control. And they didn't get the SD. Now Mystico searching for Fogged again. The Shackle won't latch, he ran perfectly down the line and Sneaking just turns into this. As Amanda style, try and break free, Deafening Blast, Center Ulti, the Call Stamp, still making him rather difficult, not to mention that Viper Ulti, but in comes Korok. Perfect Hoop Stomp, Escalibur with a double kill as the Ulti, Iowa again will TP himself out to safety. There's NOT trying to force the issue up against Navi US, and Navi US replying in turn. With just two good kills, and pushing their advantage even further. The Eye of the Storm will be on cooldown for another 35 seconds, so they can't breach high ground. But the Peen's coming to say go for the Tier 2 on Tower on the top lane. All the other lanes for NOT, like the bottom lane's pushed out, but that's it. And if Iwo comes up like he is right now, he could lose his own life. The Poison Scouting finds the Creep Wave. I don't think Iwo was really aware of this. Um, Iwo, what are you doing, man? This SD's gonna come in from behind and catch him out. Actually, no, he's not, because Fog's got no Blink Dagger. Io into the tree line. But they prepared for a five man fight up on top. The Chrono is up again. Yeah, she buys his BKB. Yeah, he shouldn't have that. He needs to have buyback available. After death, of course. He's still short by 60 gold. The Viper's now going to initiate on Ragnarok. Moonlight Shadow and Properly Ulti. Both of them being combining. Scalp maybe pushed back. The BKB and the Jesus Skull will trigger. The Invoker's already on the sideline. Lift to join him. And Snaking, the Mana Star is giving more food right now for that ultimate. The Snaking, the Yule Scepter, it sends the Void up into the air. And the, the damage is still coming out from Iowa they will bring down the Spectre. But a buyback into a Horde, not available. Horde's on cooldown. But Iowa locked in position with the arrow. Triggers the BKB. The Sun Strike's looking for any kind of opening, but it's not going to get anybody. Mihawk, he's in trouble under the tower. So the Sentinel will finally go down. Excalibur came back. 
Briar's bottom tower is under attack. Having that Spectre on the sidelines is not what they're searching for. The Invoker actually bought back to be part of that too. They're catching more out. Shackle, Korok. 15 one charge is still available. And Mystico, I don't like your chances here. I really didn't like your chances here. This game would be so much more different if there was a four staff on the Shadow Demon. <laughs> But still NOT, they're, they, they're trying to hold the line. They know they're going to lose the towers, they know they're losing team fights, they're trying to get at least an even trade as far as kill count in, the, in these fights. Korok is also very much overstaying his welcome. He's not going to get scouted out. In fact, he's just staying out of out of vision range. We're still in night time, they found someone else. Fogged has... It's Masoku. The purge as well. Woohoo! Wow, that's a lot of burst damage! And then Mystico, oh, center ulti, they're looking for that damage while he's in wind run. Two very quick pickoffs. Spectre alive again in 25 seconds time. They're pinging out the fact too, the Viper's all the way down the bottom lane. Which means Excalibur can force towards the high ground. Spectre can just TP to the bottom lane if he wants to. And farm that up, push it out. They could actually even, even have a crack here at, at the Viper. A Spectral Dagger, he could just PKB and TP out. So they need to wait for everyone else to be here to have the extra damage for snaking. Uh, that Radiance, he's got it turned off so he doesn't reveal his position. Now he comes out. Turn the Radiance on. The BKB out, they have him isolated but they have no stuns. That will stop that TP. What's also being purchased up? It's the full heart. The full heart now in for the Spectre. A little bit of catch out on Excalibur. Still a level 21 Razor in the Spectral Horn. It's coming in too, looking for that kill over on Mihawk, and they got him. In fact, they're gonna get more, they get Smash as well. And the Void, and the Invoker, and the Lich. Too easy for the kills, the Observer will do what to the Courier. The Purge actually kills this thing hands down. It's the one thing which will guarantee you a kill on a, on a Courier every single time. The Full Hearts arrived, so Spectre, he's already looking healthy as hell. The Refresher Orb, the scalp is a little bit short, but they just make more copies of Snaking and come high ground. They send him in a little bit deeper, pushing that Wind Ranger back. And they just attack directly towards the town. Fortification is still available for them. Meanwhile, Korok finds Mystico. The double edge coming in. You've got Fog right behind him. Korok will force up himself away to save. He's still a lot of damage from the tower, but the mid rank is down. The only turns off from Excalibur. He'll melt it up. The Refresh Roll has now actually arrived for Excalibur too. So in 35 seconds, they'll just force high ground. Roshan, the big man, is there. I don't know if this is really essential for him though. I doubt NOT can win in a team fight, especially with actually Corona's coming back off cooldown in a moment. This is like the only chance NOT would have in my mind to come back in this game, and that'll be a huge ass Chrono all over the pit. That's the only way. Uh, that's not really gonna happen. Iowa is currently dying to nothing but illusions. Stunned up, a sneaky moves in. There's a real attacker. Shackle unable to latch into Snaking. They did stop doing Roshan with the Viper down. I got a feeling to just call this right now. They'll push high ground and the double ulti will be triggered off by Excalibur. He can walk up and actually trigger the BKB. Where is the Sam Refresh Rob? Now it's finally arriving for him. So he's actually got himself for 10 second duration on the BKB. The Forest Boots are trying to delay him and actually scout out the SD. Who's got himself a blink dagger? He's purposefully sticking away from those four spirits, not take the damage so he can just jump in when he needs to be there. Mihawk has the corner get scattered out the tree line, just leap himself back. The central ulti will go, but Excalibur. The refresher of ulti is already going to work. If anyone comes closest, they will burn. They will burn by by death, electrocution. Chrono will go, the defensive disruption. Meaning he has to tank directly into sneaking. The Sunstrike is going to connect the Lich ulti, but now a Yule Scepter also sending them up. But this is over. NOT will be farmed inside their own base. Four star is gonna kill. He'll still get a triple kill. And with the other horn back in, it'll be an ultra kill inside the base. But the four star push been ranged the world. But GG is the call. Navi US in two games. It's the first series that has been a 2 0 here in the D2CL US playoffs. They get revenge. They get revenge at NOT. The team which knocked them down in the winner's bracket semi final. And then a date up against SNA. Tuesday night is the grand final for the USA. The playoffs for them. The winner of that best of three. I don't believe there is any advantage, but I can double check the details for that one. Uh